Okay, so here we're going to look at furthering the advanced level chess answer process. So we've already covered targeting and um, drilling down the targeting area, looking at the weak areas and that's all pretty straightforward. We've looked at end game opening, we've had a look at position play and the concept behind the strategical removal of pieces from the board. So let's have a look now at creating situations that give the opponent a little bit of an advantage but it is to their detriment. I'm going to bring the bishop here. Now what he's got is he's got his bishop and his knight here. He's potentially looking to come here with his knight attacking this pawn here but he's not taking that opportunity. So going to castle. So looking at giving them gifts. I mean this pawn here is a gift. He's, he's left that there for us. But tempo wise we potentially would have lost out. If we had taken. If they played it correctly. It's always about if the opponent plays it correctly. Could push the pawn here. He does have his knight. He does have his pawn. We only have the knight and the queen. So it probably wouldn't be to our benefit. So potentially just opening the pawn up. We're looking at what other free gifts we can give the opponent to give us a better position. If it doesn't occur, it doesn't occur. But let's look at this next stage of development now. We already immediately have established these um, squares here. It doesn't show very well on this background screen actually. I think it's too dark, these circles. So with the bishop having a bit of an attack through to the king, that's a bit of a pressure point. He's probably going to look to take my bishop off because he doesn't like that being there. So I'm going to develop the bishop looking towards the king area. Still thinking of what potentially can I sacrifice to better my position. If it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off. We've got a fairly half decent position at the minute. Can't expect the bishop to come and attack our bishop because it doesn't like the x-ray through to the king. Maybe a small pawn push here onto the bishop. These small things, at each stage I could be thinking, should I let that piece go? Does it improve my position? If the bishop came and attacked, can I leave the bishop here? It does have a pawn supporting, so basically the pawn can take the bishop back. Am I looking for that type of position? Opening up a rank, or half open rank file, sorry. So all these things to consider, you don't have to take a piece, you can look to sacrifice a piece if it improves your position. So it's more advanced level type thinking in terms of now we've looked at establishing attacking the weak areas, we've looked at targeting areas that are going to give us a better position. Now we're taking it that step further and saying sacrifice a piece if you can for a better position how can you do that so he's attacking the knight just not attacking anything else so may as well just push this pawn onto the bishop just keeping it simple smaller piece attacking the higher piece a simple concept obviously i don't want to sacrifice my queen just yet And it may not be that you ever get a sacrifice in a game but when i look on my recent evaluations and the computer basically just finds sacrifice after sacrifice throughout the games and i'm like i would never play like that in a million years but it actually works so this is why i'm now on to the next level stage of thinking how the evaluations have given my reports basically saying look you need to sacrifice basically if you want to improve so i'm going to capture here and it probably would have sacrificed early on already even before i got to this position it's just amazing how it thinks and i just can't think like that at this moment so it's attacking the queen queen can just move to the side here his knight can come here. We do have the bishop attacking this type of position because his rook is there. So that's small potatoes, but at least we know the pattern. So 
So he's got the an <coughs> annoying pin through to his queen as well. So he needs to think about something. Probably maybe coming back and attacking the bishop. Uh, I don't know. Or just moving the rook out of the way. Oh, he's coming for the rook. Is this where we go for a sacrifice? Because if we go here and he pushes the pawn, we get his rook anyway. Or shall we just attack his knight? Because where's his knight going? His knight looks kind of trapped. Which is a shame. Because we might miss out on tempo. We go here. His pawn pushes there. We take his rook. He takes our rook. I think we could just attack the knight. Because the knight looks like it hasn't got anywhere to go. Which is a shame. I really wanted to go for Sacrifice City. But... I don't think there's sacrifice in that one that is going to be a benefit to us. Tempo wise, he equalizes. Whereas he's actually trapped a piece of his, so we may as well take advantage. Oh, did I not see that? No, I didn't. I thought, <laughs> I didn't think he had an escape room. But he's putting pressure on his piece anyway, so he's having to go back. So this puts pressure on his pieces because our knight can jump to this position here putting pressure onto the knight because our bishop has got a, a check through onto his queen so he's going to have to do a bit of jostling I think that's the way to go it sounds simple enough yeah just bring the knight here attacking the knight so we've got a two on one there pawn can't take back because obviously the queen is blocking if we did take with the bishop could take if we took with the um, knight if we take the knight then the pawn can take bishop takes with a check and then we win the queen so I don't think they want to fall for that type of stuff they may just be whoa what's this it's coming back again it's coming for a double do you see this double here yeah for the queen and the king well, you see, don't like these things, but we've got to check on his king with our knight. But his, his king can just move to the side and doesn't have to do anything. So then we'd have to move the rook. Okay, so we'll go with the check first. We'll follow this process. If they do take, then we win the queen because the bishop will take them. The queen will have the check on the king. But I think he's just good. Oh! And checkmate, actually. Oh, cha! That is unbelievable. Yeah, so we talked through all of the process there. And I won't say we got lucky because he had a choice. He could have um, moved his king across and then looked to get this uh, knight fork here type situation. Quick look at the analysis on there. I don't think it's as clear cut as what the opponent made it look. Um, do, do, do the bars up yep yeah so it's come down with the knights then we captured yeah gauge bars like showing it's yeah he, i don't think they should have done that move i think they should have moved here like this oh maybe not <laughs> that's showing even worse um okay so what's oh queen take him all right okay and then he can come with his and winning our queen Ah, so it was a move order thing. Okay, fair enough. So that's good to know. But we still found a nice position. Okay, having a look at the advanced version of the answer to chess, looking at the sacrifice section. So the opponent's gone for the far flank. Let's lazy man it ourselves. Okay, so this is a strange game, but with strange games, you've just got to be careful. It's almost like they're doing drunken master, making it look like they don't know what they're doing, and then suddenly they come out with masterful strokes. Lots of pawn moves, as we know, loads of gaping holes, no advanced pieces. But it's about being able to take advantage of that disadvantage. I'm going to push through the centre here. Is there a sacrifice at this moment? 
Uh, knight's okay. Let's try and open up this center, this pawn, because he doesn't want the queen taken. <gasps> and he's taken with that pawn, so we'll take here. And we get the 20 pointer, which is the king not being able to castle. But we may be falling into their trap, so look at these pawns here. And could move the knight out of the way or just develop the bishop. This king is open, really wanted the bishop here. Knight could come through, but it's not really attacking anything definite. Knight up to come and attack the bishop. I'm going to just develop the bishop, keep it simple. If there's nothing to sacrifice, there's nothing to sacrifice. It's always being mindful that you have the ability to be able to do it. And like we say, now we can take this pawn because we've got protection on this bishop. This knight's got access to this square. And I'm not sure if that was. I'm gonna go for a higher piece first. The rook. So I'm not sure if this pawn can cause us any trouble at the moment. I'm going to take the rook off the board. This pawn's hanging a little bit loose at the minute could bring his bishop back then our knight's trapped so let's say that the knight is um, a goner but it's done a good job by capturing a higher piece so up the exchange if you like bishop's move bishop's attacking knight can come through let's capture this pawn to release the knight So <clears throat> this is the difference between the, I uh, don't want our knight getting trapped, I want. I really want to get in into the game, but I'm going to just take the bishop off the board and then go and look to castle. And let's castle, well, in fact before we castle, let's take this pawn off the board because it's highly advanced up the board. Let's get the knight out of the way. Let's get it home to safety. Probably not going to be able to castle now because his rook's going to come up with pressure on the knight. Ah, like we said, going to have to push on here, get protection from the pawn for a moment. But his knight is probably going to come here to attack. So looks like we lose a knight. So we don't want to be too greedy. This might be a moment of the sacrificial knight. Yep, so the knight then comes and attacks the knight. There's nothing else we can do about that. What can we do? Oh, it's not. It's attacking the pawn instead. So if we came here, this knight takes the pawn. This knight takes the pawn anyway. Our knight can go and put a check on his king. Let's put a check on the king. Checks first. Oh, got to be careful. His rook's going to put a check on us. But we can move the king here, protecting the pawn, opening up the rooks. Where's his king gone? Could put a check on. Do we get a fork anywhere on his um, rook before we jump? Nope. Nope. But we do on the pawn there. Let's just bring the king across here. This knight doesn't have any protection on. When you've got a cluster of pieces, sometimes it's so easy to think that they've got a protect. They're protecting each other. So he has moved, he's attacking this pawn here. Our knight can now move with a check on the king to get this pawn. Or we could push the pawn up or we could attack his rook. I'm going to attack the rook because the knight looks like it can do all sorts of whirlwind stuff. So we may as well try and win some type of tempo. Our knights are neat, whoa, neatly clustered here for an almost a checkmate position really. Knight's protecting there, Knight's protecting there. He can come down to this spot. Then we get the fork and win the rook. He'll win the knight, obviously. Oh, he's not done that. Uh, 
this knight doesn't have any protection like we said so we've got to be mindful of that could come here and attack the rook let's attack the rook protection from our rook it's getting a bit too clustered up, but <coughs> I want to get my other rook involved as well if I need to so his rook's probably going to come here because then he's got an attack on this line oh rook can put a check on the king king can jump down hmm got to be careful not forgetting he's got this little stealth knight that can jump in here but I think rook coming to here um, I was thinking of going up but then if I go up what happens he just takes the knight so, so if he comes there if we had, what happened did he move his king oh dear well we'll take the rook I don't understand that all that time of waiting and they actually moved the king that's strange right so he does capture let's go here attack the knight careful of forks don't think there is any at this moment does have his knight that can come here but the pawn can take uh, we could sacrifice and just take this knight off the board don't need to dance let's go here A lot of times you see people wanting to keep all of the pieces when they could just take a piece off the board simplify it down and it, it seems to work quite nicely um, I'm gonna bring the king up it's gonna come here with a check yeah let's attack and now he's got a fork look at that Oh dear me, it's got a fork but is it a good fork, that's the question, let's go here, let's go there, this knight's going to have to dance all the way back up to come and protect this pawn, let's move the king up, move the king up again, so the king's going protecting this one pawn but then we've got this other pawn that can come up as well we think so lovely sacrifice of the rook nice little fork so that's the type of thing we're talking about just giving up pieces and let's just keep pushing since as the knight's not coming to defend at the moment and he is now let's go so we'll be looking for another fork just bring the king down just to protect there we go then he'll be attacking the king again let's go here so we've got two two past pawns which are looking quite nice for us so we can go here or we can go here so if we go here it's probably looking for a repetition with his knight going backwards and forwards with a check so we'll go here And then the knight jumps and we'll go there. Knight's protecting the pawn. So closing down the angles of their attack, the span of their attack if you like. Let's just bring the king here. Not rushing anything. So just keep moving. He will eventually take a pawn off the board, but I think the knight will be taken as well and so he's put the check on so we can go here or we can go behind our pawn go here he puts another check on us go in here so they're kind of trying to slow the process down let's go here uh, yeah. let's go here that'll be annoying As you notice our king is getting closer towards the other pawns on the other side. So if it starts going a little bit wrong, 
let's go here so now his knight doesn't have any more checks on our king so we can freely push this pawn up can expect the knight to come here to basically sacrifice itself by taking the pawn here this pawn's blocking this pawn's movement off so that's not a problem and off we go but i think he'll probably put a check on our king here but it's not really going to make much difference what well, he's gone there whichever way so we'll go here so it's probably checkmate if he doesn't do anything if he leaves his knight there i suppose he sacrifices himself he's trying to close down all his pawns maneuvers now so let's go here he can still move his pawn so it's not stalemate So we need to make sure the king has space look at him trying to close his pawns down so that he doesn't have any other moves to make yeah so let's move the king and we can capture let's just bring the king let's take with this pawn because he wants this one passed capture i think this is resignable really at this stage but it was nice the way that we got to this position you know, nice little sacrifice with the rook and the fork and the king can't really help here now and might as well take a pawn up So before we go for a long long wait i'll just pause oh he's actually moved and we'll put a check on the king got to be careful now stalemate could happen it's taken and off we go there's plenty of time to get a queen he's got loads of space Okay, before we go for the ah, just about to say um, what do we do let's go here it's probably trying to oh I thought it was going to hide behind the pawn but it's kind of all over now so go for the step ladder interesting game Okay, the last game in the sacrifice section. So let's just develop the bishop. As usual, we're going for our usual target areas, weak areas, and we're looking at target areas as well. I'm not going to highlight them in the game because we're actually looking at the sacrifice section. So I'm just going to push through the center here. We obviously know this pawn is coming down for the bishop, so we're just going to move the bishop out of the way, so that's not a problem does capture let's uh, just bring the knight in always looking for a moment to sacrifice if the knight comes up then the pawn drops down so again let's just keep it simple and bring the knight across defending I could always push onto the knight here smaller piece attacking the higher piece so all, we're looking at all of the concepts as we're going but the idea is we're going searching for elements where we can sacrifice and gain a better position on the board. So capturing the knight here develops the bishop. Bishop is going to be in the center. This pawn is going to be, we could go here if the knight takes then, yeah, let's go here attacking the knight. Because we've got the knight defending so we can always replicate. So this is a pretty feisty opening from us both. We've got them thinking, so there's, he doesn't want this knight to be able to replicate taking here. And plus the knight doesn't have any protection on it at the moment. If we did move the knight, he's got like a two on one here on the pawn. But if we take the knight, then the queen is protecting. So if we take the knight, it seems to be a move order thing. And then we take the bishop. He's 
to go into castle now. He's not castling. Okay, so we could bring our queen here, preventing castling. Which is probably slightly annoying. Also, still protecting the pawn here, but am I overworking my queen? Let's go here for the meantime, just to be annoying. Now he's got a nice spot here, attacking the king and the bishop. So yeah, very feisty opening which seems to, at this moment, seems to be small detailed to our favour in terms of a bit of an advantage. Queen's come through. So we don't have any protection on our queen, but we could. Because if we go with the check, then the king moves. We take the bishop. Bishop knight is then still protecting the queen. So we can do a whirlwind with the knight. That was interesting. This pawn doesn't have any protection on it. Um, let's. We can trade down now. And dark square bishop can attack the king. We've got the pawn here to help for replication. Captures, captures. Let's keep the pressure on the king with that. And let's. Um, look to castle I think queenside potentially okay let's go kingside then seeing as they are attacking the pawn here oh it's given up now okay fair enough let's go here they've given up okay so that was an interesting game there move order and it was the sacrifice section so basically in a nutshell we flipped the sacrificing on its head in terms of being able to find we'll claim victory here um, and being able to find the pieces that the opponent was actually sacrificing so it's a different take on the sacrifice in the advanced section all three of the videos that we've covered um, have covered the three different sorts of aspects of sacrificing one is where you go searching you can't find but you find a better position anyway because you are searching for a sacrifice second one is basically and um, the sacrifice comes to you because the opponent's greedy munching so then they put themselves into a bad position so you can take advantage of that and the third one is where you have a look at what your opponent is attempting to sacrifice or they've done it inadvertently they haven't done it on purpose but there's a piece that's ready and available to be sacrificed to improve your position on the board those are the free sacrifice type situations those are the types of things that we're practicing as part of the ad advanced answer to chess process